Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you 27th of March. India's opposition parties hold black shirt protest against Rahul Gandhi's disqualification. Experts warn China's developmental projects impacting climate in South Asia. And Afghan girls struggle with poor internet as they turn to online classes. And now for all the details, India's main opposition Congress party held protest on Monday against the disqualification of its leader Rahul Gandhi from the parliament after a court convicted him of defamation for comments that many deem insulting to Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The opposition lawmakers attended the parliament proceedings by putting on black clothes and raised slogans disrupting proceedings in both the houses of the parliament. They also took out a march demanding parliamentary probe in the Adani Rao. Rahul Gandhi has said he will continue to question the ties between PM Modi and the Adani group, which has been accused of stock manipulation by a US short seller. The opposition has accused the ruling BJP of trying to silence their voices by targeting a prominent face. The BJP has insisted Rahul Gandhi's disqualification is lawful and not a ploy to target opposition leaders. कानून के तहत हुकूमत करो और इसीलिए हम ये चाहते हैं कि जब कानून को अगर हाथ में लेंगे तो देश में डेमोक्रेसी बर्बाद हो जाएगी और किसी को आजादी नहीं रहेगी ना बोलने की आजादी ना अपने कहने की आजादी नहीं रहेगी well, hospitals across India have stepped up preparations to ensure readiness after a spike in COVID-19 and influenza-related cases in recent weeks. The government-run LNJP hospital in New Delhi conducted a mock drill on Sunday. Experts have, however, said there is no need to panic as the hospitalization rate is still low. In the latest on Monday, India reported 1,805 fresh coronavirus cases, taking the active case low to 10,300. Apart from the national capital, Maharashtra, Gujarat, Kerala and Karnataka are among the states where the maximum number of cases are being reported. A nationwide mock drill is also being planned for April 10th and 11th to assess emergency response, health ministry officials have said. Health experts have stressed the need for maintaining optimum testing and COVID-appropriate behaviour. We are mock drill oxygen stock हमारा जो पेशेंट को हैंडलिंग की कैपेसिटी कितना है कितने बेड्स हैं कितने वेंटिलेटर्स हैं और क्या स्टाफ की तैयारी है इसके साथ-साथ जो हमारा सारा इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर है उसको भी हमने रिवैम्प किया है और आप देख रहे हैं कि जो ऑक्सीजन का ये प्लांट है हमारा लिक्विड ऑक्सीजन का प्लांट है इसका कैपेसिटी 10 टन है और इसको हम दो या तीन बार हम रिफिल कर सकते हैं and Pakistan's Interior Minister Rana Sanahullah, in a startling remark, has termed former PM Imran Khan an enemy of the ruling PMLN, saying that he has taken the country's politics to a point where either he will get murdered or us. The remarks during a TV interview on Sunday have sparked an outcry among Khan's opposition PTI party. Senior PTI leader Fawad Chaudhary said, this is a direct life threat to Imran Khan. Is Anaullah running a gang or government, he said. Imran Khan was ousted as Prime Minister in a parliamentary vote last April. Since then, he has held several rallies to demand immediate national elections. He was shot in the leg at one such rally in November. His supporters have clashed with police several times over recent days as authorities try to force him to appear in court in connection with various cases against him. His successor, Shehbaz Sharif, has said that a general election will be held as scheduled later this year. Experts have raised concern over China's mega development projects in South Asia that are impacting the climate and ecology of the region, while residents have been left to brace the hazardous consequences. A report. Experts at a seminar on the sidelines of the UNHRC session in Geneva recently raised concerns over China's mega development projects in the South Asia region that are impacting the climate and ecology. 
They particularly highlighted Gilgit Baltistan, the gateway to the China Pakistan Economic Corridor project, which faced catastrophic floods last year due to melting of glaciers. Residents also blame both China and Pakistan are rampantly exploiting the natural resources in the ecologically fragile area with no policies in place to mitigate the effects of natural calamities nor any consideration of their rights. The main land route, the Karakoram Highway, is going to need so many more repairs from landslides or floods that ultimately it doesn't have economic utility and becomes merely a, a strategic project. Uh, I make the same argument a bit about the Diyamar Basha Dam. Um, that is going to displace maybe more than 30,000 people. Sometimes the numbers are bigger. Another expert highlighted China's close ties with the Taliban administration and its intention to explore oil and minerals in Afghanistan. Inevitably, with these big projects come a, a range of environmental uh, concerns, you know, deforestation, uh, displacement of population, water pollution, uh, soil pollution, all manner of potential problems. So if we look wider across the, the BRI impact in Asia, we can see a whole range of these sort of problems. So well, Afghan girls have been struggling with poor internet access as they turn to online classes run by one of a growing number of educational institutes trying to reach those who cannot go to school amid restrictions. The Taliban administration has, however, allowed girls to study individually at home and has not moved to ban the internet. 22-year-old Sophia was seen logging in for an online English course run by one of the growing number of educational institutes trying to reach Afghanistan's girls and women who can't go to school and continue their education due to the Taliban administration's restrictions on women. Taliban officials citing what they call problems, including issues related to Islamic dress, have closed girls' high schools, barred their access to universities and stopped most women from working. Despite the challenges, Sophia says Afghan women have become resilient to the problems after years of hardship and civil war and they were prepared to make the most of the situation no matter how bad it is. It's uh, very heartbroken to us that because we are not the only Islamic country in the world. There are many Islamic countries that in there, women and girls are allowed to work, allowed to going to school, going to university, uh, they're allowed to even driving or uh, even more. But in Afghanistan, this is really heartbroken. The Taliban administration has, however, allowed girls to study individually at home and has not moved to ban the internet which its officials use to make announcement via social media. But girls and women face a host of problems from power cuts to crippling slow internet speeds, let alone the cost of computers and Wi-Fi in a country where 97% of people live in poverty. And residents in Bangladesh's capital Dhaka have been packing the makeshift chalk bazaar iftar market as they regularly prepare for breaking off their fast with an evening meal during the Islamic holy month of Ramadan. Many are concerned over relentless inflation in the country, complaining that while wages remain same as before, the prices of different commodities have risen sharply. Although higher food costs are common during... Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.